have much more to lose than we have to gain. So, definitely not doing that. Uh, it's kind of annoying, but it's fine. Doesn't actually bother me. So we're just gonna play out. You sure? You want to keep that helmet open? Or no? You know, I mean, it's not a bad plan. Um. Yeah, actually. Just play really tight. Keep keeping plummet up is is really probably correct here, um, just in case. Like, I mean, five six is great and everything, but. You try to steal your shit. Yeah, it's it's just better not to. I mean, if he steals it, it's no big deal. We just kill it anyways. But, but if he bounces, if he bounces it, is what I'm worried about. Oh yeah. Well. And at this point, we can almost consider just throwing one of these away just to push damage. Um, so we attack with all three, and yeah, totally. get him to six, and then we have basically have no lethal. Once again, we could play the Gorger here, um, but it, so basically, here's what happens: if we play Gorger and then he plays like Aether Adept on his turn, um, bounces this guy, we have four guys to his three. It's just not worth it. It's better just to keep the keep the destiny going. Keep the destiny going, as Andrew prefers to say. Don't want to throw away your destiny. That would be a bad thing. Can't have that. And uh, I mean, we still he he could you know potentially draw something, but we still just have him dead on the table um, in two turns if he doesn't do anything, or at the very least just edicting his creatures. If he taps out, now you can kill his blocker. Yes, if he taps out, we will definitely just kill him. No. Um, so at this point. Yeah. At this point, we are just going to kill the Drake just to push um, damage. He probably doesn't have something. If he does, it's still fine because we'll play this next turn. So end of turn, we're going to kill the Drake. And if he's dumb enough to attack with Stormfront, we just win. Fortunately, he is not. But killing Drake here is just fine. Do you have a Drake Drake though? No. Nope. So now we just push. And this way, I mean, he, he basically takes, goes to one, so I'm totally fine with this exchange. And we have him dead to a number of different things here. I mean, even if he mind controls, it's tapped, so it doesn't matter. It's pretty few outs at this point. Turns a frog. It is a frog. Yeah, a five five he angel. Really sadly didn't do anything. No, nah, he was doing that for flavor. He's doing an angel frog. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so against blue white, um, once again, chance he might have illusions. Um, probably bringing in crown of empires. Um, did see some enchantments. Could potentially bring in Demystify. Um, probably would need to see another enchantment to really justify it, just because it's such a narrow card. Um, if you want to, you got like two minutes. You could look at his game, see what he's got. That is a very, very good point. So, gonna go ahead and briefly do that, and we'll be back in a minute. Okay, here we are for game two. Um, Hand is okay, and we've got a Jade Mage. Um, problem is, he is pretty flyer heavy. So for all, this Jade Mage proved its worth the last. You know what I mean? Like if he doesn't get rid of it. Yeah, but we do have essentially four spells we can't cast. Um, yeah, but the Jade Mage. I think <laughs> I'm actually. One more mana. Yeah, it needs one more mana. I think. I think I'm actually going to send this one back. Um, definitely. This one is fine though. I mean, it's not as good as the last. Well, it's it's really close. It's, it's, oh, it's good. You got the destiny. 
it's it, it definitely has potential. It need to draw well though. Good news is we're not land screwed, so there there is that. And he's coming right out of the gates with uh, his Pegasus. Didn't really see any bouncing effects um, that he has. You know, we we could just start racing well, in a really big way. Like if he's got control magic, we've got stave off back up. Um, basically, you know, we do get tempoed out by by bounce. But if he doesn't have bounce, he's in real trouble. Ice cage is fine because now we can blow him out. And okay, so he gains a little bit more health. Oh god. <laughs> yeah, so the play here is case. play here is we could just start bashing, but I think it's much better to get value, so I think we're just going to um, wait for him to attack and then kill his guy. Don't give him pro white. No, definitely giving him <laughs> pro blue, don't worry. Pro blue seems much better. Yeah. Then he can't be turned to a frog. Yeah. Pro white would be pretty hilarious. I I, I admit, it would be it's hilarious in the worst way possible. Yeah. Have to laugh ourselves out of the tournament. Pretty much. Definitely gonna keep stave off back up, and just send. Oh, kill the war horse out too. Exactly. This dude's in a bad spot. He's definitely not feeling good right now. There's no lying about that. Good thing you mulligan. Agreed. That's not over yet. Paired Green Falcon is not going to take it home. And definitely going to get some free damage in. He doesn't have to. What? That's a fine block, actually. But he's gonna be in a lot of trouble. I don't know. He's gotta watch out for your lava axe. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Splashing for lava axe can't beat it. Yeah, we just haven't seen it yet, but it's there. It's there, waiting in the wings, yeah. ready to get serious. It's probably Jin of Three Wishes. Would be my guess. It's gonna need a bit more than three. Gin and dirty dishes. <laughs> Gideon. Okay, that is pretty good. Not gonna lie. I mean, even if he kills our guy, we just get our angelic destiny back and equip the mastodon. So it doesn't actually matter. But if he does the must attack Gideon, that's sort of annoying. Can't actually kill him this turn no matter what. Yeah. Which is annoying. You don't want to stay off pro white. That's bad news bears. That is bad news bears, as she put it. Yeah, definitely just gonna push Gideon. Oh yeah, no, you got to. Yep, doing it the smart way. Oh yeah. 
course. I mean, he has just a whole lot of. Basically, at this point, we pretty much lose to Day of Judgment, and, and that's it. Yeah. yeah. Did we see a DOJ in any of his games? Did not see one. That's pretty fortunate. Kind of Does Gideon, didn't Gideon. see all of his games. Oh, and that is the match. Gideon's we will Gideon. see you for the next draft, which is, should be starting soon. Okay, so here we are for the second draft. Looking at the picks, um, pretty much it's between Incinerates and Vampire Outcasts as the two strongest cards here. Um, Outcasts is definitely a very strong creature, and Lifelink I think is a big deal. But Incinerate is so versatile, um, and red is definitely a deep color. I think red as a color is going to be stronger than black. Um, however, black may also be underdrafted as a result. What do you think? I think since you have an Incinerate already, you should run two. That's just just because you've already got one there. Because you accidentally... Alright, so we'll take the second Incinerate. Yeah. <laughs> just because we uh, got lazy and missed we, uh, the may second have of the draft. Missed the first second of the draft. Okay, that was pretty terrible. <laughs> <laughs> at least we got an Incinerate out of it. Alright. Uh, Lava Axe is not bad. Um, we could also look at either like stave off <gasps> and going red white um, tormented soul is good for um, like a red black deck and I, I think that um, I think the lava axe is fine but I also think that it might come back um, the lava axe ain't coming back. this one is tough I, I think that we'll take red and just to because it's a good card and cement the color um, war paint is actually fine. War paint is great too. Um, otherwise, we could war pick up. Damage. I believe that Giant Spider is actually the best card in this pack, and so I think we're going to take that. Okay. Get some red paint. So Fire then Slinger. we have uh, Fire Slinger, who turns on uh, Bloodthirst, is quite good. Um, we also have Carnage Worm, which is an absolute beating. Um, they're both very good. Fire Slinger is incredible because he's quicker. he's quicker and he, you know, I think that green has a lot of big creatures. Um, you know, we could also look at Phantasmal Dragon, which is pretty sick also. Um, this is actually a fairly tough pick. Um, Yeah, Dragon is, there's not that many things that target in this set. So I think Dragon's a very strong card. Um, Fire Slinger is also very good. I think we're just going to take the Fire Slinger and stay open. Yeah, I like that one. Um, Goblin Grenade is quite insane if you can get enough goblins to support it. However, I think that... <sighs> Hellhound or Goblin Grenade? Or maybe even Rampant Grove? You know, I don't think it's Rampant Grove. I think it's either going to be... Like, like Colossus is fine, but I think Active Treason actually might be the best card in this pack. Better than the Hellhound? Deep into red. Um, we are deep in red. Hellhound is good, but I think that... Oh, yeah, Treason. Treason, yeah, I think treason like, just trumps, like, games, yeah. I think Treason might be a little bit stronger for us. Or Combust. We could pick up... I mean, Combust is, is a very good sideboard card. Um, Lava Axe, we could just, like, literally make a... I think you should just start rolling the train, dude. Like, just start throwing shit. Um, it's actually it's it's a very val viable strategy. I think that actually I'm gonna pick up the Basilisk because I think Basilisk is a slightly stronger card for us. Um, well, maybe not. You know, if we have Active Treason, Axe might just be better. Um, we could just make a deck that just really just goes to the face. I gotta say, I like it. Um, in that deck, Arsonist is absolutely <laughs> insane. What does Circle of Flame do? Circle of Flame is pretty much stops you getting hit. Uh, it does one damage to floor guys, which is fine, but Arsonist is quite good. Yeah. Um, Rhino is only average. Um, we're definitely not cemented into green, and Arsonist definitely fits the curve. 